<laughs> Welcome once again to the Throne of Angels video blog. I am your host, Derek Osborne, here to show you a world in miniature. Today we are going to start with our series on Project Modular Table, the table itself. We've already gone over uh, a few of the different things we're going to put on the table, but today we're actually going to start with part one of table assembly. So we're going to look at uh, the, the actual modular table setup itself, how to assemble it, and uh, how to get basically from a stack of wood to where we're at right now. So part one, coming up right now. In this video, we will be taking a look at the assembly process for the Throne of Angels modular terrain system. This is what it looks like uh, completely assembled. This is the backside, obviously, with the logo on it. That is what it looks like from the top. As you can see, it's a 24 by 24 box set for a two inch piece of pink foam. This is a quick video on how to assemble. Tools needed for this build, wood glue. I prefer wood glue over super glue. There's a lot of area to cover. On top of that, this stuff allows you uh, time to get everything put together. A really old or cheap craft brush. These are Crayola, or this one is a Crayola brush that I picked up at uh, Target. Package of those for a couple of bucks. Not necessary, but helpful. A pair of box clamps to obviously hold pieces together as you assemble them. The first thing that needs to be done is the base needs to be assembled. So this is a base. You have notches in the bottom and the top. Now, the retail versions won't ship with my logo on them. However, the way that they're set up, uh, obviously construction of the bottom piece is kind of self-explanatory. The next thing that I do is a quick dry fit to make sure that everything goes together correctly. So this box can honestly only be assembled in one way. And part of that has to do with how the teeth are cut on the base as well as the side rails. But then also you'll notice on the side rails, there's numbers. So one, on this end there's gonna be a two. Here you've got a two. On this end you've got a three. As you can see, the intelligence there is that Austin, not only did he jigsaw it so there's only one way to put them together, he also gives a um, roadmap on how the parts fit together. So when I put these together, get the camera here, while assembling, I take my glue. This is going to be a little difficult. But basically, I just take and put glue on each one of the tabs. So as I go down, I really don't care much in regards to whether or not I make a mess, as you guys can obviously see. So I've got my glue applied. This is where the old brush comes in. So I take the old brush and basically smooth it down along there. And then I get inside and make sure that I'm getting the teeth as well. Now I use a carpenter's glue for dark woods for one of two reasons. Um, one, MDF is fibrous, so it's kind of considered a dark wood because it's fibrous. Now, when you glue it, as you can see, it helps the, uh, the piece stand up without actually having to plug into any of the other pieces, right? So this one's not attached, that one obviously isn't attached. This one is standing up because the glue is thick enough to manage that. Now that I have all of the pieces firmly in place, I will run basically like a, a bead of caulk with glue in the corners. And the reason that I do this is it just gives me an extra layer of attach or sealing, sealant. Basically, it makes it uh, a little bit more, oh, who the hell knows what I'm trying to say here, it doesn't matter. But then I smooth it with a paintbrush, I do run it up the sides, every once in a while one of them will pop out because it's not snug on some of these, which is fine, you just have to be mindful of it. 
and there we go glued and assembled just a quick shot of a different angle here for you so you can see the uh, box clamps in action what they do effectively is just hold the two parts in place now I will rotate where these two box clamps are to the other side to clamp them down in about three minutes I give the glue about three to five minutes secure then I rotate the box clamps and put them in a different place I do that a couple two or three times and that's just to make sure that everything is snug assembly of the tray units is obviously now complete so I have my full set of trays complete what's up next magnets as you can see I have in my hand a set of magnets from uh, Bikes Technologies. I just went to Amazon looking for a half inch by one eighth inch disc. These are size N45, which I think is kind of a common thing. Uh, Neodymium magnets. These suckers are super, super strong. And just to give you an idea of what that super, super strong looks like, well, here's a little row of those magnets. I can't pull them apart like literally I can't pull them apart I have to to get them off I have to slide them off it's crazy so I had a question how am I going to make sure everything lines up well first you have to make sure that you get the ones where the pull of the magnet goes down the middle so they basically stick together in a line like this after you purchase your magnets you kinda just pick an arbitrary spot where you want all the magnets to point I chose the top right corner so the top right corner basically what I've done is in pencil you can't see it in pencil I think you see it in pen there that's fine I've got a set so every pull faces this point regardless of how I have my tray turned due to the fact that the tray is only rotating either that direction or that direction along the same center pole there's no flipping it there's no turning it around it's only going to rotate in one of the directions around the y-axis so it makes magnetizing these things really simple I've gone ahead and magnetized most of them however this one I will show you how it is that I am magnetizing them as you can see off frame I have a large pair of pliers I take a magnet aligned to the pole and I stick them in on the outside because the wood is just a tad bit thicker and by a tad bit I mean less than a millimeter but you can feel it with your finger I line it up with the pliers and just squeeze it into place and then I go around and make sure that all the edges are remotely flush I do that for both sides, rotate it, and when in doubt, just verify which direction the pole is going. And do it all over again. And through the magic of video cameras, we are now complete with this one tray. So. I suggest that you double check each side to make sure that it works perfectly. And there you are. Assemble the magnetize. Well, I'll go ahead and show you the three inch version and then we'll uh, we'll put the foam in. With the three inch ones, I actually had to use the clamp to vise them together because I couldn't get my pliers over the lip. But as you can see, we have the same setup all the way around. Up next, the foam inserts. And the last part of the actual construction comes from inserting the foam. Now, if you're unfamiliar with liquid nails, this stuff is hell on everything that is not wanting to be stuck to something else. Don't get it on your clothes. Don't get it on your hands. Don't get it on your shoes. Definitely don't eat it. Uh, but you use a, just a caulking gun for this light application I just make a couple of lines as in three make sure none of that gets anywhere now we've already cut our foam down I'm not going to tell you guys how to cut foam 
If you don't know how, there's plenty of sites on the web to teach it. Press down, for a secure fit, and move on to the next one. We're going to stack all those on top of each other, and I'm going to lay some heavy books or something on top of them so they uh, get as flush as possible. And then I'm going to go through and basically clean up the edges so uh, we don't have any of this overhang. Up next, actual design and cut. Okay, our next step can be handled in uh, one of two ways. We can either use our extended blade, uh, our flat flat blade that uh, I used earlier to cut the uh, the bores to length, or uh, a hot wire foam cutter, which is my preference. I have the one from uh, Woodland Scenics, obviously with a straight bar attachment on it, uh, mainly because I don't need a, a length or a six inch length of, of a cut because it's only gonna cut about an inch or so. So what we're gonna do is basically we're just gonna cut using the wood as a guide, both with the post and the, uh, the wire. Slow drag, this is, uh, you know, this is like a tortoise in the hare race. Tortoise wins here every time, because we don't want to actually break our wire. So we'll do this to all of our units. Once that's done, set this aside because we'll use this in the next step. But we're just effectively going to do all four sides of all six of our base units. I won't do this for the dungeon because the dungeon will go through a different process. So as you can see, what it does is it flattens it out. And we'll uh, smooth that out a little bit later once we uh, fill in the gaps as well. But effectively, what this does is this keeps us from having a space between two boards. So they'll butt up and we'll actually put flocking and material on the wood. So on to the next step, which is Fill and smooth. Okay, the next step in the process uh, is fairly simple, uh, but it's kind of tedious. So, if you recall, I told you to keep the off cuts from the shave downs, and the reason why is when we're cutting to fit the foam to a uh, sit inside the housing we're gonna get this type of thing right it's just gonna happen it unless you have uh, the ability to cut perfectly square to shape to size it is just gonna happen so when we have that we go ahead and just kind of fill the hole there with one of the off cuts we take our blade and then basically cut it to fit. As you can see my blade's getting dull, which means it's about time to replace it. And not much cutting needs to be done. So the next part is we move on to the fill. Uh, I use this stuff here. Um, it goes on pink and dries white. Basically it tells me when it's done. Uh, but it's just a spackling or a joint compound joint filler, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, I think I picked this stuff up at Lowe's, uh, which is a local do-it-yourself store for those of you not in the U.S. Obviously, from this point, we just smooth it on uh, and get the, uh, the rest of the holes filled up. I'm going to actually put another couple of pieces of foam in here to fill up the, uh, the large little spaces there. But we'll be right back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now here's that same corner that I just showed you. And you'll see that it's still pink but it's kind of white up here as it's drying. Now I will put two applications on here because this was literally the, the widest gap that I had in the whole set. 
Uh, but I wanted to show that uh, to show that it really, quite honestly, isn't that big of a deal. So here's one of the other ones that, uh, that I did uh, a few minutes ago. And you can see that there really isn't any gap. Also, if there's not a huge gap or if there's no gap at all, obviously you don't need to, you don't need to fill. Now, the, uh, the pink foam that I buy comes with a perf, literally, that runs down pretty much the middle uh, of the entire thing. So half of my boards have uh, basically a quarter inch perf, and it's, it's just a machining line, basically, is all that it is. So I fill that in as well. Uh, it's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, and if you're a perfectionist like me and you want everything to be flat and perfect and, and awesome, well, there's a next, or there, there's a step after this one that involves uh, basically 600 grit uh, sandpaper. So don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, just get it filled and, and fairly smooth. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next step from here. And that concludes part one. So coming up for part two, basic shaping and the start of the sculpting process. We'll also talk a little bit more about planning and how, uh, basically how it's all going to kind of come together uh, on the tabletop itself. So, I'll be looking for part two coming up uh, in a few weeks. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next round. Ha, 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 ha.